Okay, guys. Um, it is December 25th, 2022. And all I'm doing is a small rebroadcast of this particular video. It's celebrating Christmas, a sin in the Bible. Well, this video is going to answer that question. Okay? This video was done years ago, and all I'm doing is a, a rebroadcast of it, updating it to 2022. Because if you believe in the book, and you believe in the scriptures, you already know there's nothing new under the sun. So I'm going to let the video answer those questions. You guys should know better than to be celebrating a pagan holiday. Saturnalia. It has some strange connotations behind it. But yet, if you're Israelite, if you're Yahudim, if you really believe in the book and look behind the legalese, you'll know and find your answer in the book of Jeremiah. I'm not going to do your homework for you today. I'm going to let the video express all the answers that are necessary. But you guys got people out there spending their last dime crying, killing people, hurting people, committing suicide to do idol worship to this pagan day. And yesterday, the 24th, was Pagan Day Eve. But you're the follower, right? You're the follower of Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus the Christ, in English? Really? Well, I'm going to test that in this video. It's a rebroadcast. It's a repost. Stop fooling yourselves. Get in line. You're in the end of times. You're in the end of days. I hope this video strikes all of you deep down in your core and challenge your wicked consciousness and that wicked heart of yours. These pagan holidays teach you guys how to ignore the rule of law in the book. It teaches you guys how to sin and to create some false sensation, warmness in your bodies to worship idol gods, so to speak, other mighty ones than the creator himself. The one who created the heavens, this earth, and Sheol, hell. Heavens being Shemaim. Your pagan holidays should not be worth your soul. It's not worth mine. But everybody can do it, right? Traditions of man are vain. Go look that up. And with that being said, Here's the presentation. Sit back and enjoy and be convicted. This is Breaking Down the Bible, the Hebrew Scriptures. Do you believe in the book? Do you believe in the Scriptures? Well, good. Come and take a walk with me. Because in this Hebrew questions and answers segment, we're going to talk about something that's very close. Matter of fact, it's 12-24-2021 at the time of this recording. On the morrow... And here, 
at 6.18 p.m. on 2024-2021, Shabbat is starting because the sun is going down and it will be very dark soon. But another pagan day that the world calls Christmas will be celebrated into this very evening until tomorrow. So on Pagan's Day Eve, while it's just another day for another Israelite, Hebrew Israelite, the pagans, the world of the United States, North America, and those who consider this thing called Christmas something to celebrate in reference to Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus the Christ in English. It is so far from the, the direct truth it's unbelievable and believable because of the great delusion that's among us. So when I get questions that are relevant towards the faith, the belief, the law, I tend to answer them. And because some of the questions have a worthy cause and this might help someone be free set free from the learned ignorance so they can unlearn it and learn the law the bottom line is you all should be abhorring this day should abhor it as sinful in nature. Nothing about it is true. Nothing about it is true. Other than its true roots and its form. And why am I saying this? At the end of the day, it's about our father's business. It's about your souls. More importantly, it's about his law. And why you guys should not be transgressing it. The bottom line is. Sin is transgression of the law. I think we all would agree on that. But do you ever wonder why we were torn from my history? While we're in these dire straits. And now the Most High is waking us up to knowing who and what we are. But sometimes in order to know where you're going, you got to know where you came from. How did you get here? So the question that's before yourself and me is celebrating Christmas as sin in the Bible. I would say Torah, the law. So hopefully as we go through this edification, the answer will appear. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you need to go back and check my words and go look this up for yourself. Because a lot of time and effort has been put into the whole deception of this pagan holiday and holidays. These pagan holidays should not be celebrated. But we're going to get into the answer before I get too passionate and give it all away. Listen, you're going to be judged. Even if you don't believe. That you think you came out of some dark hole and the world created itself. 
you're going to find out. That the creator of all created all of this stuff. Whether you want to say something, someone out there created all of this. And it has to go back because there's a time limit on your conscious being there's a time limit on your body there's a time limit on your flesh suit it's a time limit whether it's near or far is still a time limit So your actions upon this earth are being recorded. So you better be right in your actions. Or you better be steering towards a different path back towards the old paths, the law. You need to start taking heed. No Israelite, even if you're converting over, and you repented for those actions and those sins no Israelite should be celebrating pagan holidays period and then you're going to talk about well Christians well there are no real Christians in the law Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ, is not a Christian. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not a Christian. Yes, Jesus was not a Christian. All of that was made up. Even at the core essence of Christ, Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus the Christ. And you're claiming to be a follower of him and you stigmatize this name on it the core basis of christianity rooted out of the law some commonly call judaism jewish which is not that's a whole nother teaching for another day catholicism catholic Roman Catholic changed a lot of this stuff in this book to fit their narrative and they would tell you they did it that's why you hear me in prior teachings talking about Catholicism their way comrades building they are the largest aptitude in this land that owns most of the real estate in this world is the Roman Catholics they have the largest assets in this world believe it or not go look it up now on your screen Jeremiah 17 1 through 9 Jeremiah I highlighted this for a reason because I want you to pay attention to what's going on here even if you're converting, you're waking up. You must know that the sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. that's scratched in pretty good it's pressed in very well you're not gonna remove it with a cloth you're not gonna remove it with a brush house of Israel Yashadel and some of the translations it says children well 
The Most High never had children. He never had a child. This is another translation. He had Yasid. He built man, woman only. Sons and daughters only. Child comes from the word CL, German in nature, from the womb. He did not build man from the womb. He built man from the land. And built woman from man. The world child and children is deceptive. So here it says, whilst there are people, sons and daughters, remember their altars and their roofs by the green trees upon the high hills. Now, this is getting to be very specific. It says, oh, my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and the high places for sin throughout all thy borders. Now, previously we didn't go into this, but even in the context, you guys should be able to glean and hear there's something going on here in the book of Jeremiah. 17 chapter who's talking why is this being said look it up and number four it says and and thou which you can say you of the house of Israel even thyself shall be discontinued from thy heritage that I gave thee and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. You getting the picture now? Who's talking? Where this is coming from? The father is upset. towards a stiff neck people a chosen peculiar people Judah house of Israel you want to do whatever you want you want to be out there sinning walking in the light of man instead of the light of the law of Yah You can't have two masters. Walking, moving, performing in the traditions of man will cause yourself to err each and every time. Number five. Thus saith the master, Lord is master, it's another translation. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. There you go, right before your eyes. And make it flesh his arm. You're relying on man and the physical being of man. And those and whose heart departed from the master. I left that there because you need to see the difference between how I'm writing and what it's in there. Lording over. Never called himself Lord. He's master. The master to be exact. The creator. There's only one. Guys, you need to wake up. Everything that you're doing is being recorded. The accountability of your life on this world, this earth, is before yourselves every day. 
you're participating just because the world, the United States or America, or those people and the masses are doing. Enough said. Because I could keep going on and on. For he shall be like the heath in the desert. And shall not see when good cometh. That's how blind you are. Because you re rebel the truth so much. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. In a salt land. And not inhabit it. You're going to be desolate. Some of, some of you guys are spiritually bankrupt. Some of you know it and some of you don't. But you need to start waking up. We are in the end of days. And end of times. So you must trust in the law. You must lean into it. No matter how rough or hard it gets, you must lean into the law. Not of Christianity. It's a religion. It's not part of our heritage. It's not part of our ways. We didn't celebrate no birthdays or no holidays, none of this garbage. It was feast days. Number seven, blessed is the man. It didn't say person, even though your translation out says it said person. Most I didn't make a person. Back in the day, it was about men and sons. Her son. Now these words that we have in English are so ambiguous and it's on purpose. So you don't know what the true intent is until you study. The Most High, Yah, is no respect of persons. Because it's a persona. A personality. It's fake. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Master, and whom hope the Master is. This requires belief, faith, carrying out the law and then demonstrating the law and performing the law not just in word but in deed this means that you're supposed to be doing things not just running your mouth building constructing the spiritual aspect certain signs and wonders will follow if your Holy Spirit is properly charged to help heal the sick, raise the dead. So many things you haven't seen because you haven't been around the right people. That's why it's so hard for you all to believe. Those who can't grasp this. forget oh well some of that stuff is so far off to believe it has never been done absolutely it's been done the most high yah the creator of all does the impossible he created it all we the priests of our home the ministers here on this land the servants the true servants of him that obey are charged with these abilities. It's not just about praying, it's about doing. Mostly in the Christian onset and these other so-called religions, which means more than one God, so to speak, and commonly called, 
they demonstrate with their mouth and minuscule in their deeds. Your actions count. What comes out of your mouth counts as well. So whose hope the master is at the end of number seven, it says, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. A tree planted by the waters will never thirst because it rooted itself in the ground and taps into that water. Especially if it's the living waters where we should be tapping into. And that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be and shall not be careful in the year of the drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit when you're planted deep in this thing it doesn't matter what goes on around you because you're planted deep within the law and it's in your heart, it's in your system, it's in your conscience, it's in everything that you do every day. When you're living this law, it's not the same as talking about it. You're living it, you're doing it. And your fruit are your actions that will be judged at the end. Just remember that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it but our own creator? Man can guess, be experienced all he wants. He cannot predict. He cannot properly analyze. He cannot dictate the heart. Because the actions of the wicked are going to be conducted and then you'll know about it after action sometimes you'll know before that action but the one who created that heart knows it all I placed some of these teachings in earlier times on this channel. You can go back and look at it. Here's the one of the slides. It says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of Yah, Yahweh Elohim. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart, not part of it. Here in Psalms and Telahim, 119, uh, 1 through, through 9. Your whole heart. It didn't say part, three quarters. That means you need to put him in your life every day. When you wake up, you go to sleep. Did you at least read one chapter? Some of you got no excuse because some of the chapters in the book are short. Did you read a page? One page. Three. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You don't go around will willfully sinning. Yahoo deems. Yah shut up. You shouldn't be wearing makeup. women earrings or all this stuff on your ears lipstick men earrings in your ears that means you belong to somebody somebody placed a stamp in your ear that's a symbol insignia so when you're wearing it in your ears men that means you have a master here Somebody that's controlling you. So who's your master? With the earrings in your ear. 
Number four, thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently every day a pursuance. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy laws. Here they call them statutes. Statutes are not law. There's only one true lawgiver. And from the Father, there's only certain people that were given the law. And that's of the house of Israel. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with up rightness of the heart when I shall have learned thy righteousness judgments. Righteous judgments are a failed aptitude in these court systems and on this land. This place hates the truth. This is why I'm doing this video because some of y'all are highly delusional about this pagan season. I will keep thy laws. Oh, oh forsake me not utterly wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking heed thereunto according to thy word that's how you cleanse your dirty old past drop down the old man and pick up the new through water baptism not just by word because a lot of y'all think that it's just a word it's not a lot of camps promote that. Okay? Your body must be immersed. If you're following Yeshua on the Sheikh Jesus the Christ, was he not immersed? Matter of fact, who immersed him? Who baptized him? Psalms, Telahim, 119, 10 through 16. With my whole heart, have I sought thee? Oh, let me not wander or wander from thy commandments. You don't want to go away from these, these commandments and these laws. Trust me, there's nothing out there in the world. It's the best thing going. I've traveled all over this world in a lot of places. And trust me, just because it has a different look and a different tongue don't mean the actions will be the same and the delusion the same. You're going to find pockets of good people within the law of the house of Israel out through this land. They're waking up. It is a process. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So who is saying this? Because if you hold the law, the word, in your heart you won't sin against our creator our Elohim our heavenly father blessed art thou O Yah teach me thy laws 13 with my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth that means you have accepted them there's an acceptance there's a covenant there's an accord there's a contract So as yourself is performing, the Most High is not going to break his word. Because you're trying to get into his house. And he's allowed a method to get into his house. No dirty boots. If you go look at the previous teaching. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will mediate in thy precepts. That's meditate. Because mediation is another form where you must be judging the house of Israel and the saints. But meditation means that you're going to dwell on them. So the two parts of law that I have in my mind is meditate and mediate because you're going to have to move this word as well. But here, it's meditate. In thy precepts I have respect unto thy ways. That's his laws. That's his will. 
you're respecting and accepting his law and his will to get into his house of the house of Israel and to promote his rules and his way that he wants us to live this life which is righteous and not sinful I will delight myself in thy laws I will not forget thy word you got to be active every day because if you're living this word you're not going to forget it when I tell you guys you're going to be judged I put it here so you'll see it this is in a past teaching 2nd Corinthians 5 10 11 this is Kortim Shinni number 10 for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done whether it be good or bad there's accountability here you don't get to just do whatever and later you're gonna burn there's a reward for all your deeds good and bad and you're not the judge the false judges in this land do whatever they want in under commerce and contracts and falsehoods of religion knowing therefore the terror of the master I left Lord there we persuade men but we are made manifest unto Yah, our Elohim, the Master, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. Listen, you're going to be judged based upon your actions and the rules. So you need to start learning the rules and dump those Christian rules and all those other religions because they're, all of those are made up. There was only one law given. And it's been diluted, perverted. And we were disconnected from our heritage because of all the sin that we were doing away from the law. It was not in us. It was not upon us the way it should have been because we weren't living it. So what did he do? What does a father do when a son doesn't obey him? What does a father do to a daughter when she doesn't obey? What happens after so many warnings? Matthew 12, 36, 37. I'll leave that lingering in your mind. Some of you have never been uh, properly disciplined a day in your life. Some out there go overboard. I get it. But I say unto you of the house of Israel that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Everything that's spoken, yourself has to account for. You got to explain all your actions, all your words, all your deeds. Thirty-seven. Twelve thirty-seven. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Your words and your actions that you're using. It's going to come back upon you. And it's going to be used against you in the court of law. You ever heard that before? Where do you think these courts are getting it from? The Torah, the book, the Bible, in some forms, because there's a lot of mistranslation information in some of these Bibles. So, we get into this Part about Saturnalia, which is what the true etymology of this thing called Christmas is, and if it's in the Bible. 
there's two other parts of scripture that Christians use to use against those who are celebrating this Christmas. Those other scriptures are used so it'll make themselves feel better about celebrating this pagan holiday. Certain aspects of those scriptures is when a young one is born or when commonly called Christ is born. It has nothing to do with Christmas. Never did, never will. Christ Mass. Who built that? Je Jeremiah, Jeremiah, you 10, 1 through 5. Here is the close you're going to get. And listen, what does it tell you to do? Hear ye the word which Yah Elohim, the master, speaking unto the you of the house of Israel. Thus saith Yah, the master, learn not the way of the heathen. It's highlighted for a reason. Learn not the way of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. They hate the true law. Because it's divinely choreographed to get you back to the creator. And to be righteous. They don't want to be righteous. They just want to do whatever and live their lives. So be it. Fill your cup up. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Not so much as today, because they're using chainsaws, and they're making them in plants, and manufacturing them. But back in the day, they used to go out to the forest, like some do today, and they chopped this tree down so they could worship it. Elements of Nimrod as well. Your, the tree should be used for building and keeping you warm. But you're throwing all this stuff on it and glorifying it. And indulging yourself in it. You don't even know why. Traditions of man. Believing in man. They deck it, the tree, with silver and gold. You ever heard of the term silver bells? That's what they're doing. Silver and gold tasseling on these trees. All these curses and spirits every year you're putting on yourselves. They deck it with silver and, silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that had not moved. It used to be a cross, an X, so to speak, in the bottom of the tree to hold it upright so they could idolize and worship the tree on this day. Now, can you imagine going out, getting a tree in the woods, in your delusion state of form, bringing it back to your house and fastening two by fours or wood on the bottom of it to keep it upright so y'all can worship and participate into a, a pagan sinful practice and perform these rituals every single year. Practice is acting. The word act is in the word practice. That's why I'm saying the word practice. And here's another example that in the, uh, number five. They are, they are upright as the palm tree is what they're telling you about the other tree. But speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. 
Be not afraid of them. For they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. The ones who are doing this, they're claiming this to be a righteous good. And it's not. What they're claiming to be good is not. It's not in them. They're highly delusion. Wicked is all get out. Oh, well, I did good over here. I did good over there. Well, that's not what the book says. And what makes you think at your time of judgment, the Most High Yah is going to accept your claim of good? There's only one good. And there's only one good law. And that's what we should be abiding to. Oh, I know, Officer Wolfline, we're, we're in this land and they got laws. Yes, you're still in captivity. But there's no reason why you can't keep this law. While breaking and stretching these other ones. That don't make sense. Take heed. This is the definition of paganism. If this fits your lifestyle, that's what you are. And it's it's wrapped in religious beliefs because it's more than one so-called God. The most high didn't call himself God. Man did that. And it wasn't in this this tongue. How the world was formed. Aramaic, Hebrew, Aramaic is the consolidated thought of how the Most High spoke. Versions of Hebrew, ancient Hebrew. You got to realize it's about laws, not statutes and codes and traditions of man. Holy days and feast days is where they got this garbage from that they're, they're pushing on you now. So anything that's outside of the law, it's going to be pagan, period. It's not of the Torah or Abrahamic laws. That's for it's not a religion or religions. The Abrahamic laws in the Torah is not a religion or religions. It's the law. Just in case you're confused on that slide. The word pagan without a capital P is often used to describe anyone who is not of the Torah, Abrahamic, Abrahamic laws, or Abrahamic laws. Thus, for these laws are not a religion or religions, meaning the Torah and the Abrahamic laws. They're not religions, they're laws. And a similar term to the paganism is heathen. That's the way the slide reads, so you're not confused. Saturnalia is your true etymology of this thing called Christmas. Ancient Rome's seven day festival of Saturn, which began December 17th, celebration marked by unrestrained revelry and often. Lysitianist in origin. Listen, the core value of this thing, Christmas, the Saturnalia, is sacrificial orgies between young ones, 
men on men, women on women, or whoever and whatever, and then they used to give gifts to each other. There's a culmination of sinful behavior in this thing called Christmas, which is better known as Saturnalia. And in a time around what they call winter solstice and Yuletides, all of this has a history. It's built in delusion. And some of the history in the early Babylonians was the popular resolution was to return borrowed farm equipment because there was a spring connection to this. Attaching itself to a baby, a newborn, to signify the new year that had begun in Greece. Now early Christians denounced this practice as pagan. But the church finally allowed the members to celebrate the new year with a baby. Why is this here? Because it all has ties because even in this Christmas thing, they have babies, sacrificing babies. Hence the new year, which is another pagan tradition for Janus. This is a Roman god, Roman deity. So why did Caesar name it January? Because of Janus. To pay homage to the Roman god of doors and gateways and the same god that had two faces. The Roman god Janus, it was a dual-headed god. One that looked forward and one that looked in reverse or backwards. And it basically represented the actual metaphorical threshold in time and space. They made it up with their hands. They made it all up. I put this part in here because they have more history behind it. Going through Christmas to New Year's. They're right behind each other. When the Council of Nicaea convened for, for a Sylvester, who convinced Constantine to prohibit the Jews from living in Jerusalem, at the Council of Nicaea, Sylvester arranged for the passage of a host of the Exitualist anti Semitic legislation. The bottom line is the Catholic saints are awarded a day to which Christians celebrate and pay tribute to one saint's memory or a saint's memory the 31st is saint sylvester day in conclusion we shouldn't be celebrating new year's because it's an abomination to yah heavenly father that's just a short version of new year's and combining christmas together because i didn't want to keep this video too long but i'm pushing it on because some of this stuff i have to break down So what is sin? Whosoever committed sin and transgresses also the law. For sin is the current transgression of the law. Pagan idol worshipping. Does any of that sound familiar around this pagan pagan day's eve or holiday called Christmas? And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Whosoever abided in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Little ye see, beloved ones, baby, infant, so called children, let no man deceive you of the house of Israel. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And that's how you got to do it. The word you means more than one. 
That's why when I say you, I'll use you of the house of Israel because this book of law was written to Israel. Your conversion to the house of Israel, you become Israel. Eight, he that committed sin is the is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose of the son of Yah was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, the deceiver, the evil dark one. Whosoever is born of Yah do not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of Yah. I put that in there because some of your translations has that word God. You got to be careful with that term. It's a man-made term. So that's why I say creator or Yah. The Most High Yah. Number 10. In this, the people of Israel, not children, the people, I'm doing this so you can see it. In this, the people of Yah are manifest, and the people, the sons, or the sons and daughters, of the devil whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of Yah not of our creator not of our Elohim neither he that loveth not his you got wicked people and you got the righteous people they're not going to do the law of Yah the most high Yah the creator of all they're going to do the one of the wicked one of this land the so called God of this land So celebrating Christmas a sin in the Bible. There's your answer. It's transgressing law, idolatry, paganism, worshiping other things. So there's your answer. Psalms, behold, Telahim, 51.6, behold, you of the house of Israel desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. That is true. Proverbs 4.23, guard thy heart with all, due, all, I would say all due diligence, or all diligence, proud of it, are the issues of life. No, you are. The one ninety-seven, two eighty. Public law ninety-seven, two eighty. Know who you are. Know the difference between the two. You gotta pay attention to this public law ninety-seven, two eighty. Go read it. Go to Chad Daddy's new social network. Go to search that is where you find stuff. You can search on that just like uh, the other search tools. Go to Daddy version of the video system. Visit us on officerwolfline.com. Again, Global Chat Daddy, Global Tube Daddy, Global Search Daddy. So make sure you like us. We're on Facebook. Don't forget to subscribe. YouTube, Facebook, and you can follow us 